Welcome to a video on the distributive property. The goals are to identify the distributive property and also to apply the distributive property. The distributive property states when we multiply a factor and a sum or difference, we multiply the factor by each term of the sum or difference. So for example, if we have a times the quantity b plus c, so if we have a times the quantity b plus c, we're going to multiply the a and the b and multiply the a and the c. So we'll have a times b plus a times c. Similarly, if we have a times the quantity b minus c, we'll multiply the a and the b and also multiply the a and the c. So we'll have a times b minus a times c. Now sometimes you'll see the distributive property written using this form here in red, and it's just a way to combine these two rules into one. Notice we have a plus or minus sign, meaning if we use the plus sign here on the left, we'll use the plus sign here on the right, and if we have a minus sign on the left, we'll use a minus sign on the right. Let's go and take a look at some examples. We want to rewrite each expression using the distributive property in order to simplify. So in this first example, we have five times the quantity, six plus two. So we'll multiply the five and the six, and also multiply the five and the two. So we'll have five times six plus five times two. We have now applied the distributive property, and now we'll continue to simplify. Well, five times six would be 30, and five times two would be 10. 30 plus 10 is equal to 40. We have simplified this expression using the distributive property. Well, let's take a look at this again. If we had five times the quantity six plus two, and we wanted to simplify using the order of operations, we would perform the addition inside the parentheses first. So this would be five times six plus two, that would be eight, and five times eight is also 40. So whether we apply the distributive property to simplify or use the order of operations, of course, the result is the same. Let's take a look at another one where we have a variable involved. Here we have two times the quantity x minus four. So we're going to distribute the two or multiply the two in the x and also multiply the two in the four. So we'll have two times x minus two times four. Well, two times x is two x and two times four is eight. So we have 2x minus 8. Let's go and take a look at the distributive property geometrically, meaning let's say that the length of this side is 4 inches, and the length of this entire side here is 15 inches. If we wanted to break this area into two smaller rectangles with this black line here, Let's say that this length here is five inches and this length over here would be 10 inches. We can use this to model the distributive property. We know the area of a rectangle is length times width. So this larger rectangle has the dimensions of four inches by 15 inches, which means the area would be four times 15 or 60 square inches. Now just to illustrate the distributive property, we could take this product here, which represents this area in green, and write it as four times five plus 10, instead of using 15. Again, if this total length here is 15, and if we broke this length up into two pieces, one piece being five and one piece being 10, this result here would be the same. Now if we apply the distributive property, we'd have four times five and four times 10, well, four times five is 20, four times 10 is 40, and the result would be 60 square inches. Well, this 20 here represents the area of this smaller rectangle here. Notice the dimensions of this rectangle are four inches by five inches, and this 40 here represents the area of this rectangle here with dimensions four inches by 10 inches. So the area would be 40 inches squared. So this illustration just justifies the distributive property geometrically. Let's go and take a look at two more examples. Here we want to rewrite these expressions 
using the distributive property. So in this first example, we'll distribute the 9, meaning we'll multiply 9 and 2x, and also multiply 9 and 7. So we'll have 9 times 2x plus 9 times 7. We'll go ahead and simplify this. 9 times 2x would be 18x, and 9 times 7 would be 63. And on the last example, we'll distribute the 3x, so we'll have the product of 3x and x, and the product of 3x and 4. So we'll have 3x times x minus 3x times 4. Well, 3x times x would be 3x squared minus 3x times 4. We can multiply the 3 and the 4, so we'd have 12x. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.